yeah. Boom! Let's do this. Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh yeah. Got an amazing, amazing show for you today. <laughs> Woo! Let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. Sorry for keeping you waiting. A little bit of issues, but we got around them. Let's get started, guys. We've got an international audience, an international audience. Yes. All over the world, guys, there's almost 20,000 people registered for this event. That's crazy. Almost 20,000 people from around the world. Welcome. Wherever you're from, India, welcome India. Welcome Germany, welcome Australia. Welcome Spain, welcome the UK. Welcome all throughout the continent of Africa. Welcome throughout all the continent of Asia. All of my Latinos in South America, welcome the United States, welcome Canada, all of you. Let's do this guys. As I've mentioned to you guys, I only need about two, two and a half hours of your time. And I promise if you give that to me, I'm going to rock your world. Today. Today. Now let's get ready to do this. Let's do it, guys. All right. Now look. Every single time I am given the opportunity, traders, every single time I'm given the opportunity, right, to grab a mic and speak to individuals no matter where they are throughout the world, I make it a vow, a promise to myself and to you that I vow to myself that I will give enough value for you to walk away with something that you will be able to use for the rest of your life. I have been speaking to people throughout the world about the joys and the wonders of trading for the last 26 years of my life. And each time I've been given this opportunity, I've made that promise to myself. So that is my promise today. Over the next two, two and a half hours, I promise you and I promise myself, I vow to myself, that you're going to walk away with something that you'll be able to use for the rest of your life, something of value. This is a free event, but it does not mean that it will lack value. This is a free event, but it does not mean that you won't walk away with something that will potentially change your financial life. And it's free, but I promise you, at the end of this event, I will have rocked your world because that's what I do. <laughs> I'm a world rocker when it comes to this space, at least. Okay, guys. Now, I actually had some technical difficulties. I don't know what the situation is with my slides. I'm going to, I'm hoping this is going to work for us here, but I am going to go to my presentation, which I can't for one reason or another have full screen, but I think we can make this work. I still think we can make this work, okay? Now, I will say to my staff, you'll have to give me a call. Should there be any technical difficulties throughout this presentation, I am not going to know about it unless you give me a call. So that message is to my staff, which is standing by in all rooms. Now, what's amazing about this presentation today is that it is being conducted in three different languages. Obviously, I'm speaking English. It is also being translated live simultaneously in Spanish and in Portuguese. So we're not only truly an international audience today, but um, we are international as far as languages as well. Okay. The topic of our talk today is going to be trading for wealth. Now, a lot of people in the industry know me 
as more for my short-term oriented prowess in the market. I made my bones on Wall Street back in the late 1980s, early 1990s. And because of that notoriety, because I became known in the industry from my Wall Street years and the accomplishments I made in markets during that time, I got more of a reputation for being um, a trader, a short-term shark-oriented trader that was um, very highly capable of pulling money out of the markets in a big way, very early, day by day, week by week. But what a lot of people don't understand is that today, about 10% of my activity is really dedicated to short-term oriented trading. The vast majority of my wealth, the vast majority of my resources, and the vast majority of my time is actually dedicated to this style of market play trade trading for wealth now when it comes to these two styles of market play right short-term oriented trading that is more of an income approach to the markets and that is extraordinarily necessary as well traders i need you to understand that very very necessary and very important and it is a market style that every market player in my opinion should have under their belt but at the same time at the same time where you want the skill to be able to make income, you definitely want to always work on building wealth. Wealth is for a lifetime. Income is not. Wealth is generational. Income is not. Wealth is a, is the potential for building a legacy. Building income or generating income is not. Wealth you pass on from generation to generation. Income you do not. Now, it doesn't mean that the income style of market play has less importance than wealth. They're both sort of like twins in the game, and you need an income approach and a wealth approach. So today, we dedicate our talk to the wealth approach, okay? Now, for the benefit of those who do not um, know who I am, okay, uh, very quickly, let me just go over a few bullet points about my history. Guys, I've been trading the markets for 38 years, going on 39 years now. My first trade ever was in 1981, probably long before many of you were born, actually. Um, I became a professional on December 6, 1986. Guys, I remember that day like it was yesterday, all right? I spent about eight, almost nine years, all right, conquering Wall Street, And then in in September of 1994, I took a fairly risky, big move. I left my Wall Street career to go out on my own and start my own management company, my own capital management company, my own hedge fund. That fund was called or that company was called Pristine Securities. Many people went on to become aware of that company via the name pristine.com. I formed that company um, in New York City in September of 1994, okay? That company would go on over a 12-year period, right, to become one of the most recognized financial firms in, in, in history and one of the largest direct access brokerage companies in the United States and would also go on to become one of the most recognized academies or professional schools for professional traders. Now, um, I've been known as the father of swing trading because in 1992, I coined the term swing trading to give my particular style at that time its own name. So many of you are very familiar with the term swing trading. Well, that name comes from me. I termed that style of market play in an interview all the way back in 1992. And much of my early work is on my particular style called swing trading. And if you right now Google Oliver Velez swing trading, you'll see a lot of my early work on this style and no one else's work on the topic of swing trading 
predates my work. This style of market play is my invention. Now, in 1998, Barron's ranked me the number one source for professional training in the space of professional trading in the United States, in America. That was, I, I was number one ranked in 1998. In 1999, the Dow Jones dubbed me the Messiah of trading. In, in the year 1999 and 2000, the entire industry got together and named me the chief principal representative of the entire trading industry. I was the inaugural keynote speaker at the first International Traders Expo in 1999. I was also invited back to, to be the representative for the entire industry again the following year in 2000. I am the author of five international best-selling books on the topic of trading the markets for a living. These five books are written in five different languages, English, Spanish, um, Japanese, Mandarin, and German. They continue to sell millions of copies around the world to this very day. Right now, I have one of the largest trading organizations in the world with over 10,000 traders spread over 92 different countries throughout the world. My traders specifically focus on the equity markets and the forex markets. And of course, I continue to advise and speak for financial organizations globally. Now, very quickly, this is the article that was written by a division of the, of, um, the, the, the Wall Street Journal that that named me one of the top traders in the United States. This is the Barron's article that ranked me and my company and the services that it provided as the number one source to go to in the United States all the way back in 1998. This is a very, an image of just a few of my books in various different languages. If you were to Google Oliver Velez books, you'd probably come up with something like this listing and showing you all the books. Traders, I'm one of the most published traders in the industry. And there you have it, guys. Um, before we actually delve into the material, I would like for you to follow me on these various social networks. Why? Because I dedicate hours and hours each day to make sure that each one of these channels um, uh, receives a valuable trading content, and it's absolutely free. So follow me on, on Instagram if you can, where I am probably the most active. On my YouTube channel, which is where you are right now, I make sure that every single day, 365 days a year, there is something of value that will inch you toward your ultimate goal of becoming a master market participant. And so make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the bell in the upper right-hand corner and turn notifications on so that you never miss when I go live and never miss when I'm, when I'm issuing my daily valuable trading content there. On Periscope, it's where at times I do trade live and I do have nightly discussions at times on topics of trading and, I, and I'm able to take your questions and answers one by one on that. So if you can follow me on Periscope, there'll be some great nightly talks that will also inch you towards your ultimate goal of becoming or wanting to be um, a professional market participant. So now, let's delve into this topic of wealth trading. Now, before I delve into specific approaches and tactics, I have to give you an overall view of money and wealth because they're two different things. A lot of people believe that money equals wealth, and it's wrong. Money is not wealth. Wealth is actually beyond money. Wealth is greater than money. Wealth is more valuable than money. 
And I'm about to show you how money actually is not very valuable at all. And so we have to utilize money. I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you how we have to utilize money to actually create wealth. And if we don't utilize money or we hold on to money too long, we will actually go broke. Now, listen to me carefully. What I'm explaining to you is, is that money is actually not the good thing. Money is a tool, but it has to be used quickly. And if we don't use the money quickly to convert it into wealth, the money evaporates. And this is is what millions of people throughout the world do not understand. They do not understand the difference between money and wealth, and they don't understand the purpose of money. So there are millions of people that are scrambling to accumulate money in some way throughout the world, right? But that's the wrong approach. We have to utilize money to build what's lasting because money is never lasting. Now, let's go back to the presentation and let me start explaining this concept to you, if I can. All right. Now, for some reason, I can't get full screen here. So you're going to have to see my presentation within the PowerPoint structure. But I hope that's going to still be okay. So what do we need to understand? We need to understand that there are three types of markets. There's not 10 types of markets. There's not 20 types of markets. There's only three types of markets. Let's review them now. Market number one is what I call the boom bust flat market. Now I'm going to repeat that. Market number one is what I call boom. That's the rise part of the market. We top out and then bust. That's the declining part of the market. All right. Let me see if that shows up here. Nope, okay, that's not the one, it's this one. The decline part of the market, that's the bust part of the market. Now notice with this market, notice with this market traders how I'm depicting that we start at zero, we go through a boom, we top and then go through a bust and return back to zero. And then that cycle repeats. So this type of market actually starts with very little value. It does rise in value over time. At some point, there's a top in that value. And then after a top, there's a decline in that value that starts erasing all the gains that it once developed. And then it returns all the way back to little value again. But it will repeat itself after this return. And this market repeats this cycle over and over again. Zero to value, value back to zero. I'm going to repeat that. Zero to value, value back to zero, repeat. This is market type number one. Now, there's a way that we must play market type number one. When, when market type number one is below its median line, let's call this its median line. Okay, you see that middle line there, that's its median line. When markets are below its median line, it's actually good value. When the market is above its median line, the value's not that great. So it's important to understand where this your market is in relationship to its median line. So to make it simple, buying under the median line is a fairly good idea, but looking to get out above its median line is also a good idea. 
Unfortunately, most people get attracted to this market when it is way above its median line because they're impressed by what they've seen and heard during the boom cycle. No one's impressed here, which is when you should start getting excited about this market. But most people are impressed here. So you'll see that, for instance, many people are interested in the stock market now here. But when the stock market's declining like this, no one's interested. Most people are saying stay away. So most people play this cycle or this market incorrectly. In fact, most people play all markets incorrectly. Now, this is very important to understand. Market number one goes from no value or little value to value, value back to little to no value. And this market repeats this same cycle forever. Now, here's the thing. What makes it not as simple as that is that the cycles can last. All right, let me see. Hello? Hello? Am, am I okay? I'm sorry? You can't see my pen. All right, so can you see my pen now? Let me see. Can you see it now? Can you see the pin now? All right. So let me just make sure we have this right, guys. I just want to make sure we have this right. So can you can you see my pen? Just let me know if you can see my pen. All right. So traders, let me know if you can see the pen. What I'm explaining is that what makes this cycle not as easy to detect sometimes is that the cycle can go from zero to top and back to zero, sometimes over a relatively short period of time, but sometimes it goes from zero. Yes? Can you see it? Okay, check it now. Check it now. So... Um, and sometimes you can, uh, go from zero to top back to zero over a long period of time. So sometimes this cycle is over months. Sometimes that cycle completes itself over years. All right. Stay with me. Stay with me. All right. Stay with me. Okay. It's not, it's not that. I don't think it's that. Um, guys, give me just a moment here. Tell me if you can see it, see my pen marking now. See if you can see my pen markings there. All right. In the meantime, let's go. Now, I have a question for you. I have a question for you. Did you see it? No? No pen markings? You see a pen, but you don't see the markings. Okay. Which slide do you see right now? Okay, no, it's very delayed. Okay, so look, I have a question for you at this particular point. Stay with me here. Which markets are boom, bust, and back to flat. Which markets go from zero to value and then from value back to zero again? Which markets do you think fall into this category? Remember I told you that there are three different types of markets. All right, I'm going to have to do it. I'm still I'm going to have to do it without a pen. All right. So. So, which markets are boom to bust? Very simple. 
Check this out. Some of you might be surprised. Stocks, bonds, and all paper assets. Traders, listen to me carefully. Stocks, bonds, and all paper assets go from zero to top, top, back to zero again. That is right. Now, guys, let me just see something here. There. All right. So, guys, we're going to have to do this without markings, but I can do it without markings, so don't worry. Okay? Don't worry. All right? Don't worry. So, that's right. A lot of people say, well, Oliver, listen, I've heard that Stocks go up over time. Wrong. Stocks go up over time is one of the biggest financial lies going. Traders, listen to me. Stocks fall into this category, traders. The boom, the bust, all the way back to zero again. Stocks do not go up over time. Stocks are paper assets. Bonds do not go up over time. Bonds are paper assets. All paper assets revert back to their intrinsic value. Nothing. Now, some people say, well, Oliver, what if I, what if I do a historical look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average all the way back to the beginning of the 19, 1930s? Isn't the Dow straight up? Isn't the S&P straight up? No. Now, listen to me carefully. I want you to understand what the trick is to make the public believe that stocks go up over time. We judge the market by indices, right? These indices that have 30 stocks, the Dow Jones Industrial Average has 30 stocks, the S&P 500 has 500, the NASDAQ, the, the, the NDX has um, 100 stocks. Well, listen, let's take the Dow for example. The Dow Jones Industrial Average started with 30 stocks. Every single original stock that was in the Dow Jones Industrial Average initially is no longer in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So check this out. Whenever an index gets a bad stock in it, whenever a stock goes sour or bad, the index kicks the stock out and replaces that bad stock with a good stock. Yay! So when one of the stocks in the average goes sour, they pull the sour one out, kick it out of the list, grab something strong, put the strong one in its place to keep the impression that the average is continuing to rise. Yet all the bad ones get kicked out. Now, what if you could take your trading record and do trades and all of the bad trades you pull out of the numbers and kick the bad trades out and only keep the good trades? Wouldn't your track record look like it went up over time? Even if you were a losing trader and won every now and then, if you got the ability to kick out all the losers, all the companies that, that turned sour, all the companies that went south, all the companies that eventually went bankrupt, you kick out, but you replace them with strength. This is the financial trick. If we kept everything in, traders, if we kept every stock in, all the stocks that went to zero, all the stocks that went bankrupt throughout the history of the markets, the market would look like it went straight down, not straight up. There are millions upon millions of companies that no longer exist. 
The market is largely driven by a small handful of stocks you know, Microsoft, Facebook, Apple, you know, things of that nature. But what about the tens of thousands that you don't hear about? What about the tens of thousands of struggling companies that are not powerful companies, that are not making a lot of money, that have gone bankrupt or near bankrupt? If we keep or put those numbers into the market, the chart would look different. So the market does, they utilize a trick to make the market look not like this. They utilize the trick of eliminating or not displaying what is weak and what is bad to give the impression that markets go up over time, but they always come back to almost zero value. Now, this is not a bad thing. We can utilize this boom to bust cycle. And that is what wealth is all about. Understanding the cycle and utilizing it to create wealth for yourself, which I'm going to teach you how to do today. Now, let's go on to market type number two. We know that stocks, bonds, and all paper assets are part of the market number one. Here is market number two. This is the boom bust up market. This is very different. This is a market that does not go all the way back to zero ever. This is a market that has bust periods and up periods. So it has boom periods to the upside. It has bust periods to the downside. But if you put all of the boom and bust together over time, it's still a rising market in terms of historical value. So while the paper market, stocks, bonds, and all paper markets don't gain value over time, this market does gain value over time. Yes, it has periods that are up. Yes, it has periods that are down. But over time, that red line you see depicts the historical rise in value despite the ups and downs. Now, my question to you is this, traders. Which market do you think which markets fall into this category? What do you think? Which markets fall into the market type that doesn't lose all of its value, that over time rises in value? If you guessed These, or any of these, you're right. Boom! Gold rises in value over time. It never goes all the way back to no value. Silver rises in value over time. It never goes all the way back to no value. Art, collectibles, farmland, and potentially Bitcoin has joined, or cryptocurrencies, in particular Bitcoin, has joined this elite group of markets. Markets that have booms, yes. Markets that have busts, too, yes. But despite the booms and the busts, they still, over time, increase your value. They still, over time, increase your value wealth. Now, this is very important to understand the different types of market environments. So remember, paper markets have booms and busts, but the busts bring it all the way back to little to no value. The second market is a boom and bust market too, but the general trend is up the value will be increased over time. And those markets are 
gold, silver, art, collectibles, farmland, and Bitcoin. And I'm going to teach you or show you how to take advantage of this market to build your wealth. All right. And then we have the third and final market traders. This is the boom bust. All of them are boom bust. But are they boom bust flat paper markets? Are they boom bust up hard assets, farmland, art, collectibles, um, gold, silver, or are they boom bust down, which means that they have some boom periods. Yay. They have some bust periods. Ouch. But the general value is declining all the time. Now, which markets do you think are these boom bust down? They go down and down and down and never Stop going down. Never stop going down. Which markets are these? <laughs> Someone was saying oil. <laughs> Feels like that. Can you guess? That's right. That's right. Some of you got it. Currency. All currencies eventually go to zero, traders. Yes, this includes the almighty U.S. dollar. Every currency throughout the world has eventually gone to zero. Every currency's future is zero. Will they have periods that appear as though they are booming? Yes, but it's really more of an appearance. They're just, they look like they're booming because everything else is declining. But yes, there are periods of boom. Yes, there are periods of bust. But over the booms and busts, the trend is forever down. So look, we've got the three types of markets, right? We've got Look, we've got the paper markets, stocks, bonds, all paper assets are boom, are no value or little value to boom to bust back flat, okay? Then you have the boom bust that doesn't go flat markets, the boom bust, but they generally rise in value. That's your gold, silver, art, collectibles, farmland, and I'm throwing Bitcoin in there today. That's the new one that's joined. And then you have the boom bust down markets where, yes, there are periods that are up. Yes, there are periods that are down, but the, the, the overall historical trend is down forever. And that is currency markets, including the dollar. Now, let's take a look at a few facts here. I want you to know, and then we're going to get into tactics and techniques, guys. But facts, you must know. All right? Fact number one. In the year 1913, the U.S. dollar was valued a dollar. That is when the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States, all right, took over the banking system. And so a dollar was a full value of a dollar. Today, that dollar that same dollar from 1913 is worth four cents. That's right. So what does this mean, traders? It means that the, val the value of the dollar has declined by 96% since the year 1913. Now, it doesn't, it may not feel like that if you don't look at this correctly. Now, listen to me carefully. This is very important. My mother, my mother bought her first house for $18,000. Her first house for $18,000. My mother sold that same house for $38,000. Now listen, it's the same house. One year it's $18,000. 
another year it's 38,000. So what happened? What changed? Did the house change? No. All right? It just took more dollars to buy the same house. So the house stayed the same. The dollar declined in value to require more of them to buy the same asset. So it's not that the house rose in value. It's that the dollar declined in value. And this is the another trick that, that dupes millions of people throughout the world. They look at the wrong end. They assume that, wow, prices are rising. Homes are expensive. No, homes are the same. The dollar's declining. You have to look at it from the other end to start to understand how the wealth game is applied. So every time you put a dollar in your hands, it loses 2% every year. Dollars in the bank lose 2% every single year on average. So it's the incredible melting man. You hold a dollar and it's melting, it's melting, it's melting. And, un and unless you take that dollar and move it to something else, it'll completely melt to nothing. Cash in the wealth game is trash. I'm not saying it doesn't have zero, I'm not saying it has zero value, but the people who know the wealth game take dollars and convert them into something that doesn't melt because the dollar or any currency is a constantly melting asset. It melts like a freaking ice cube. Do you understand that you're holding in your hand? Hold it long enough and there's no ice cube anymore. So you get dollars and transfer them to something that doesn't melt. All right, you getting? So one market, we pull money out of the paper market and we make money in the paper market and move it to something that doesn't melt. We make money in the declining market, but we also quickly move it to something that doesn't melt. And that, in a nutshell, is the wealth game that we're going to delve into a little more deeply. All right. Fact number two, silver, 1913, price was 60 cents an ounce. Today, it's $24.86 an ounce. Now, look, there have been booms and busts in both in silver. All right. But over time, if you drew a line from 1913 to today, that line would look like a straight up line from 60 cents to 25 cents. All right. Gold in the, in the year 1913 was $20.67. It's now 1908. Now, gold has recently had a boom. It's had some busts at well, but as well, but if you took a line from 1913 and connected the 1913 price to today's price, the line would look like a straight up line, all right? But if you did a line from the dollar, all right, let us let me go back to, let me go back to my screen. So if we did a line from the dollar in 1913, okay, you start it a line and you connected the price of $1 to the price. Now it would look like a straight down line. If you took the line and put it on the price of silver in 1913 at 60 cents and connected it to the line to the price today at $25 an ounce, more or less, the line would look like a straight up line. If you took the 1913 gold price of $20 and 67 cents an ounce and connected it to today's price of 1908, that line would look like a straight up line. If you took the 2010 Bitcoin price of eight cents and I'm being really, really generous, it was actually less. But if we took eight cents a Bitcoin in 2010 and connect it to today's price, that would look like an incredible upline of 10,538. So now look at item number one, the dollar, its line is straight down and item number two, three, and four is straight up and item number four is incredibly straight up. 
These are facts you have to understand. So we must make dollars, make currency, but we have to over time switch them in things that do not melt because currencies melt. Even stocks melt. All right. We're going to use all of these markets. Here's a quick um, image I grabbed off the internet of what the dollar has done from the year 1950. If you look in the lower left-hand corner, you'll see 1950, 1960, 70, 80, 90, 2000. That's the incredible melting effect of the dollar. Hold them too long and they're worth less and less and less. Cash is trash. All right? Okay. Here is a historical pr price chart of silver. Now look at the booms and busts of silver. Going all the way back to 2013, I mean 1013, one, um, 1913. So on the far left-hand side of this silver chart is 1913. On the far right is today. Now look, you can see um, uh, all the way back in 1980, that super high peak is in 1980. All right, you can see that super big drop into the year 2000 or so, 2000, 2001, 2002, way below its median line. The next peak happens, you know, in 2010, 2009, more or less. So it's had some booms and busts, but over time it rises with its booms and busts. If we take a look at the market of the, the long-term historical chart of gold, look at all the booms and busts in gold from the year 1913 to today. Okay, we started off at $20.67 an ounce, more or less, all the way back in 2013, which is I'm a little off on this chart. But we've had a big spike in gold in, in the year 1980, another big spike in, in 2008, 2009. We're getting another spike to the upside now. But over time, despite its crashes and its rises, Despite its booms and its busts, over time, it does rise in value, unlike stocks, unlike currencies. All right. Very important to understand. If we take a look at an historical chart of Bitcoin, I'm going back to 2017 when all the excitement started for Bitcoin. Look at the boom into 2018. Ridiculous boom. Look at the crash into 2019. Look at the crash into 2020. But despite its booms and busts, it is joining the ranks right now of something that over time rises in value. Now take a look at the NASDAQ stock exchange. And why do I look at the NASDAQ? Because it is the engine behind much of the markets, the stock market's fuel. It is the fuel behind much of the stock market's strength. Okay? Technology-driven NASDAQ. See the difference? Not up over time. What you are looking at is a past chart of the NASDAQ going all the way back to the beginning of the 1990s. Look at the left-hand side of the chart, 1990s. Look at the rise, the gradual rise throughout the mid to late 90s into this meteoric rise called the dot-com bubble into 2000. From 2000, we top and then start the bust cycle part of the cycle. That bust part of the cycle takes several years to basically bring us back once again to little or no value. 
This is the paper market. Unlike the gold market, unlike the silver market, unlike things of that have intrinsic value, paper doesn't have intrinsic value. Therefore, it must always come back to little to no value because its intrinsic nature is little to no value. I need you to understand that a stock is nothing more than the represent, representation of an idea. That stock certificate doesn't really have true value. The idea we can make money from, but the stock certificate itself doesn't have real value. Now, you might be saying, how does this fit into a wealth game? Well, we have to understand the nature of these three markets, and we have to understand how to utilize all of them. Just because a market goes down doesn't mean we can't make money from it but we have to understand its nature. Just because a market doesn't go up over time doesn't mean we can't make money from it. We just have to know we can't leave money there. We can make money in a declining market. You can't leave it in a declining market. You can't leave your money in a market that ultimately declines over time. So anyone who is holding cash forever in a bank or what have you is losing value over time if you're not understanding this concept and switching it to things that don't melt over time. And this is what wealth is all about. And this is what I spend a great deal of time educating and training my wealth traders about and helping them do the same moves I have been doing since the late 1980s to build massive wealth that can be passed on from generation to generation. All right, now let's do a quick summary and then let's delve into some, some, some tactics and techniques that I want to share with you. Quick summary, guys. All money or fiat is the term, money that is backed by no value except the faith of the government behind it. All money declines in value. Fact number one. Fact number two, all paper markets like stocks, they rise and decline. So all money or fiat just declines. All paper markets, they go up and they go down. And then they repeat up and down, up and down. All right. We can utilize that market. We just can't keep everything in that market forever. Wealth occurs when your value rises faster then all of those other assets decline. So paper markets decline, money declines, wealth is created when what you have rises faster than these other markets decline. And of course, the markets that go up over time is our final summary point, gold, silver, art, collectibles, things like ammunition, firearms, agricultural property, farmland, Bitcoin, they only rise in value over time. And that's right, firearms and ammunition is in that list. Now, now that I've given you a general concept of wealth versus money, now that I've also given you a thorough understanding of the only three types of markets that exist and how we can't leave things in a declining market, how we must rotate between these three markets. Let's get into some specific tactics and techniques. But first, let's go over what we're going to need. We're going to need a few things. Number one, we're going to need a monthly chart because when we're dealing on the wealth side, the monthly chart becomes a time frame that becomes very important to us. We need a big time frame. We don't need a two minute chart. That's day trading. We don't need a daily chart. That's like swing trading. We need something bigger than that. We need like a weekly chart can do, but I like the monthly chart in addition to the weekly chart. That monthly chart allows us to step back and get a really big, nice historical view of where we are in the cycle. Are we above the median line or are we below the median line in this historical cycle? 
Are we near the top in this historical cycle? Or are we near the bottom in this massive historical cycle of what I'm looking at? And the monthly chart gives us the best ability to do that. Now, we're going to take that monthly chart and we're going to put a 20 period simple moving average on it. That's going to be nice. We're going to add to that a 50 period simple moving average, and we're going to overlay a 200 period moving average. So we're going to have one monthly chart, no matter what we're looking at. We could be looking at Bitcoin. We could be looking at Apple. We could be looking at gold prices. It doesn't matter. We're going to look at things through the eyes of a monthly chart. We're going to look at this monthly chart with three moving averages on it, a 20, a 50, and a 200. All simple. Now, guys, I've been studying the markets for a long time. I've been playing the markets for a long time, since 1981, professionally since 1986. There is very little out there that I haven't spent a lot of time experimenting with. And a lot of people ask me, Oliver, what about the other forms of moving averages, the weighted moving average, the triangular moving average, the exponential moving average? And I have found throughout all of my decades playing the markets that there is no evidence that the sexier varieties work any are any more superior than the simple form. So I use simple moving averages all the time. All right. Now, we're going to take a monthly chart. This is an example of a monthly chart of the NASDAQ 100 index. All right. It's a little old. All right. I think this goes back to February, but it serves the purpose. On this chart, every bar represents one full month of trading. You have the green bars represent a month that went up in price, all right? Some months go up in price more than others, but all the green ones have gone up in price, which means that the month started the month ended higher than where the month started. The red bars are months that went down in price. So the month ended lower than where the month started. All right? Monthly chart. And as you can see, this chart is displaying all the way back to 2011 through the beginning of 2020. Okay? About a little bit less than a decade. Now, we're going to take the next item and we're going to put a 20 period moving average on this chart. Boom. There's your 20 period simple moving average. Now take, take a look at this. I want you to note that your NASDAQ market, your NASDAQ 100 index, this could be anything, but right now we're looking at the NASDAQ. It is rising. The 20 period moving average is rising and for the most part, the NASDAQ is rising above its rising 20 period moving average. This is going to become very, very important as we move on. Both items rising. Now, guys, when you pull up a monthly chart of anything you want to look at, stocks, options, bonds, futures, gold, silver, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ethereum, pet rocks, farmland, trees, mother-in-laws. I don't care what the item is. If you pull up a monthly chart and the monthly chart and you put a 20 period moving average on that monthly chart, if both of them are rising, the game becomes rather simple. The game becomes to get interested in the market when the market is close or under, close to the 20 period moving average or under the 20 period moving average. The game then becomes when the market moves away from the 20 period moving average, you want to become a seller. So listen to me carefully. You can pull up a monthly chart of anything. We're looking at a monthly chart of the NASDAQ. And when you put the 20 period moving average on the monthly chart, if both of them are rising, the game becomes very basic and simple and very rewarding. We want to wait for the market to come back near the 20 period moving average. Look in, at 2016. Well, look at 2011 all the way to the left. 
Look at when it was near the blue line. Look at late 2012 when it was near the blue line again. Look in 2015 when it was near the blue line again, near or under. Look in early 2016, near or under. Look at mid-2016, near the blue line. Now you have to go all the way back to the end of 2018, the beginning of 2019, near the blue line or under. Look at the middle of 2019, near the blue line. Look at the corona collapse. I mean, the the coronavirus collapse. Look at the COVID collapse in the market. It brought the market near the 20 period moving average, below it, and boom. So once again, once again, traders, if, I think I can do it like this. If, you, have a monthly chart that has a rising 20 period moving average. You go into 20 period moving average play mode. I got to explain one more thing to you here. We want to become interested at or near or under the rising 20 period moving average. So anywhere near it and certainly under it. But the question is, where under it? How do I strike with this? How do I know when to dive in? It's simple. I call it my color game. When you touch the 20 or come near the 20 or under the 20, the very next time green takes out red. Boom, there you go. You dive in. So once it gets near, that's the game. So let me get rid of all these circles and I'll show you. When does green trade above a red? Right there. Boom, do you see that? Green trades above a red right there near the 20. Boom. Green trades above a red right there. Boom. Green trades above a red right there. Boom. Green trades above a red right there. Boom. After touching the 20. Green trades above. Above a red, repeat, green trades above a red. And so the game can be this simple. Some traders say, Oliver, it can't be that simple. Yes, it's that simple. All you have to do is wait. You have a list of markets. Which market is rising with its rising 20? Now, Pull all the markets out that you're following. Get the gold, get the silver, get the stock market, get Bitcoin, get all the markets. Now, of all of these markets, which ones right now with their monthly charts are rising? Which ones have rising charts and rising 20 period moving average? Now, maybe out of 10 markets, maybe there's three markets that way. Now from those three markets, let's just wait for the market to come back toward its rising 20. And once it's back toward, it can be near it, on it, or below it. Listen to me carefully. Near it, on it, or below it. I'm going to repeat this in your face. I think this is so important. All right. Near it, near it, on it, or below it. Near it, a little above it, 
on it or below it. It's a zone, okay? So I want you to understand, we want the market to come back to that 20. Now, after the market has come back to the 20, we then wait for the color change. We wait for green to wipe out the most recent red. Boom! Now, some people say, well, Oliver, what if I'm wrong? Where do I get out if I'm wrong? Once you get into the green that is taking out the red, you protect yourself under the bar you jumped into. You see, once you buy the green, you protect yourself under the the green. Once, one more time, once you buy the green that takes out the red, you protect yourself under the green. Now, take a look at this. Look at your risk. You're risking this for this. Now, my question is, how many of these little ones fit inside of that big one? Let's do another one. Your risk here is this. But that's in exchange for this. How many of these little risks fit into your reward bubble. That's how you play this game professionally. That your risk, traders, is little baby shito, baby, baby, shito, baby, shito, baby, shito, baby, shito, go, 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 You understand what I'm saying? Baby, baby risk, one bar, the green bar. Now, you're going to risk this one green bar in exchange for the possibility of 40 green bars, 100 green bars, 300 green bars. But you're going to risk one bar. You see, the key to playing the market successfully is to make sure that your risk is so minuscule compared to the potential that you can be wrong 10 times and be right once and get all of your money back. Most people have the equation backwards. They're grabbing little change, but allowing losses to get out of control. So their big bubble is the loss side, their little bubble is the win side. You have to reverse that. Now let's go back to the chart so that you understand this thoroughly. This is very important. All right? Look at your risk here. You're going to risk the green bar, right? So let's risk this green bar. See this? See this first green bar? We're going to risk that green bar right there. Boom. That's even too big. Let's risk that. That's my risk bubble. Baby. But in exchange... For this one. Now, if you keep it over time, look at your gain bubble compared. I can't even get it there. <laughs> look at that's crazy. Do you understand what I'm saying? So this is the important concept. Guys, if you can just do this one thing, you can get fabulously wealthy. Now, I'm going to show you this tactic. You say, Oliver, it's so basic. A 12-year-old can do it. That's right. And I'm constantly saying, guys, look, if your, if your market, if your market approach, if your trading plan, cannot be understood by a 12-year-old. It's too complex. Markets are not 
complex mechanisms. They're very basic, primitive mechanisms. And I'm always using this as an example. I use the analogy or the example of the human body. Now, my human body is very complex. There are 12 billion processes firing off every millisecond. Billions. There are things I'm just not aware of that's happening to keep me alive. So your body as well. But the market doesn't have 12 billion processes. You know what it has? Three things. Up, down, sideways. That's it. Think about how basic that is. The market can only do three things. And it does two things 98% of the time. No, a little bit more. A little bit less than that, but let's go. 90% of the time, it goes up and down. The other 10%, it goes sideways. Think about that. 90% of the time, it does two things, up and then down. The other 10% sideways. That's complex? No. You know what? You're complex. You see, most market players are horrible because they bring the complexity with them. They bring their lack of discipline. They bring their inability to to know what's low risk versus high risk. They bring their faulty belief systems. They bring their lack of education and training. These things make the game far more complex than it needs to be. You understand? It's not that the market's complex. They bring complexity to the game. The market's basic and simple. Up, down, sideways. Up, down, sideways. Now, let's go back to the chart because I have to give you another concept here. If it is the best time, traders, if it is the best time to get into a stock with If it's rising, I'm sorry, I'm doing a circle here. No, if it's rising and the 20 period moving average is also rising, our game begins, right? Now, if it is as simple as get the best time to get in is when you are at or near the 20 and the color change occurs, then what do you think you do, traders? I'm looking for your responses here. What do you think you do or think about doing when you get away from the 20? So if it's best to get in near the 20, what do you think you do when you get away from the 20? What do you think? If it is the best thing, to get into the stock near, what do you do away? That's right. Jess is right. Armida's right. All of you are right. You sell and wait. That's right. I don't ever want you to think about starting a brand new investment away from the 20 period moving average. I don't care how juicy it looks. I don't care how enticing. I don't care who's making money. If it's away, stay away. Your time will come. But here's the beautiful thing. Here's the beautiful thing. There's always a market near the 20. Ha! Always. Guys, there's always one. If you focus on one, no. But if you focus on like 10, there's always one near the 20. That's the beauty of the wealth game. It's beautiful. This is what I help traders do to build their wealth this way. All right. Now, let's continue. This is, I get so excited. Guys, I've been doing this for 38 years and I still get excited. My God, it's crazy. All right, now, let's go on. I want us to put that 50 period moving average on there now. Now, why 50? Because the 50 will help you 
visually see the juiciest area to start thinking about investing. You've got your market. It is rising. You've got a rising 20 period moving average, but there's a space between the 20 and the 50. That is the juiciest. Look at that juiciness. <laughs> this is juicy. Now there are some advanced things that I'm not going to share with you today. We don't have enough time for that. But when we get into the juicy zone, there are specific things I want my traders doing to get in early. So instead of waiting for the color up here, you see, instead of waiting for the color to take out up here, we're getting in in the juicy range. And there are specific techniques for that that I would like to teach you. This is the juicy range. You see, you can get near the 20, but if, oh my God, if you slip into the juicy zone, it's just your, your wealth is just more juicy. It has more, it has more potential. All right. And as you can see, the Corona collapse got us into the juicy zone. Now, guys, here, I want you to do something. For those of you who have time to do it and interest and, you know, you can take a little bit of time to do this. This date at the low here is right there. I should put an arrow. I should make that a, a better arrow here. I want to show you this. See this low here in the juicy zone? Now, that date is the absolute low is March 13th of this year. Now, if you go on my Instagram or Facebook feed, okay, scroll down to March 12th. All right, go all the way back to this date. This is March. I'll show you. March 13th. I'll make it I'll make it look clear in just a second here. Boom. It's March 13th. 2020. Go to March 12th. Go all the way back at my feet of March 12th. Listen to the video that I post to the world, that I post to my traders. All right. I shorted the market, check this out, here. You now know why. Because we were away from the 20 period moving average. It doesn't look like it that much now, but that's really away from the 20. Short, on the 12th, I announced I'm covering all shorts, March 12th, March 13th was the exact low. Wow. If you go back even further to February 7th, you'll see another video explaining that I am going to now short the market heavily. That's right here. This is the date. Boom. So if you go back to February 7th, you will see the video where I'm telling the world, I'm going short, you should short too. If you continue to March 13th, you'll see I'm covering all shorts. We are in the juicy zone. Now what I love, there's certain things I don't like about the internet, guys. But there are certain things that I love about the internet. You know what I love about it? All right. I love the fact that I can create an electronic footprint that will stay there forever. That no one can deny. No one can deny how I played the market. No one can deny 
what was done. No one can deny what was said. Electronic footprint stays permanent there for life. My record all the way back to 2010 when I started my wealth program is documented call by call, play by play with an electronic footprint that cannot be erased. That's what I love about the internet. All right, guys, let's move on. I love this. I love this. I love this. This is crazy. We, you know, we have to, we've got to get that 200 period moving average on there. All right. Now that will come into play during what? When do you think, if we use, guys, check this out. I want to see how brilliant you are. And I know some of you are brilliant. If we're using the 20 and the 50, when we are in the boom part of a market cycle, remember there's boom, bust up, boom, bust down, boom, bust flat. But every market has boom, bust, boom, bust, boom, bust. So what we're looking at now is a NASDAQ boom part of the cycle. But and during the boom, right, we use, during the boom, we use the 20 and the 50. What do you think, what part of the cycle does the 200 become relevant? You let me know. I'm going to take a look and take a look at you. All right, so remember, in the boom part of the cycle, the 20 and the 50 are our key moving averages. What part of the cycle will the 200 become important? Talk to me. That's right, Jesse. That's right, Carlos. Yeah. Nancy. Jess. Yeah. Moeder. Yeah. Ashi. That's right. We need that 200 when the bust starts happening. And we need that 200 to know when the bust is likely getting into a mature state. Do you understand? So when stocks kind of revert all the way back to that 200 or under, we know, uh-oh, it's time for some real macro accumulation for the next boom. See, all markets will repeat the cycle. You've got to know where you are in this cycle. How many people do you think know where they are in the cycle of what they're trading. It's close to zero. <laughs> I mean, think about that. Think about how now you are so un, your, your blinders are off with this. Like before you put money into anything, you should be checking the cycle. Where are you in that boom to bust cycle? All right, and if you say, all right, I'm in the boom part of the cycle, are you in the beginning of the boom cycle? Are you in the middle of the boom cycle? Or are you closer to the end of the boom cycle? Do you know that you can determine that? Let me, let me show you. You know that you can look at this boom cycle of the NASDAQ. Look at how the moving averages were close. Over here. Now, look at when, look at now. Or look at not too long ago. Look at the left and look at the right. So guys, look, when you are in the beginning of a boom, which means your item is rising, your 20 is rising, but the moving averages and the item are all still kind of close, you're in the beginning of the boom. If you are super wide apart with all three, all of the items. Look at all of the items. Let's circle them. Look. Look at how each are separated and wide apart. So you're closer to, it doesn't mean you're at the end, guys. We can't nail it like that. All right, let's not be ridiculous, okay? I can't nail it. I actually just, I, I'm good at nailing a lot of things, but in reality, 100% of the time, no, I can't nail it like I nailed it on, 
on February, um, on March 12th. Even February, I started shorting February 7th. The market went up for a couple more weeks. And it was the beginning of March where the collapse happened. So I, I can't always, you can't always nail it to the specific point. But you can know, generally, am I closer to the beginning of the boom? Am I in the middle of it where it's they're, they're apart but not super wide? Or is this now starting to get ridiculous? And we can all do that. Now, how many people playing the markets even professionals that don't know where they are in the macro cycle and they're risking someone else's. Usually in the case of professional, they're risking tens of millions of dollars of other people's money. They don't care. I never want that to be you. You will never be that again. After this event today, you will never be that again. You will never be an ill-informed market player who says, yeah, I want to start my investment plan, my long-term investment plan right here. No, you can say, okay, I'll start it here. I can start, I may not have caught the beginning, but I can start it there. But I'm not going to start it there. And that's what I wanted to accomplish with you today. Just the ability to know which markets to move money out of. When you make money in the NASDAQ, guys, check this out. When you make money in the NASDAQ market, let's say, this is a paper market. You take profits out of the market, right? Where do you put it into? You receive cash, but you want to find a market if you want to continue to put it to work. It's like that now, you see? Do you understand? So you take it out of this market and put it in that market. I hope that makes sense to you. That's how you rotate your money. You see, this market looks like this. Check it out. You see it. This market looks like this. Uh oh, no, I did the wrong thing. This market looks like this. You see? Boom. All right. But which markets now, uh-oh, which markets look like this? How can I grab this thing? Here it is. So we pull out here. And put in there we just move from market to market elevated market away out new market beginning in elevated market out new market begin in and they just rotate from one to the other forever oliver will this ever end never not in my not in not in my lifetime not in yours either this is the game forever and guys you know what i walk traders through this for life they are with me for life every single move i make they know it i show them my buys i show them my sells i tell them before i'm going to do it they follow me Guys, a number of traders, a number of people that have become wealthy over the past 10 years doing this with me, when markets were way back here, look, in the beginning, 
We started this program in 2010. Why do you think I started the wealth program in 2010? Because everything was close together. Now everything is wide. But this, but some markets are at the beginning now like this. And other markets like the NASDAQ are like this. We just rotate. The color game, you know, buy the color near the 20, buy the color between the 20 and the 50. And then during after a bust, we're going to buy the color near the 200. That's after the bust. So you know this now. Now, take a, let's, let's take a look at some of my plays over the years, okay? Apple was my biggest holding. Apple was our biggest holding. Look, guys, look at the items together. Now, look at the juicy zone. So, look, we're starting in 2009, 2010, all right? Now, look at, look at all the additional Look at the cells. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to circle the buys and the sell points, right? Where you take some gains off. Not all of, all of it. You know, We don't ever take all. Or we rarely take all when we're in boom. We take some. Boom. Away. You see, but do you see the juicy zone again? You see the juicy zone? Boom. That's the juicy zone. I love the juicy zone. God, I love the juicy zone. It's juicy. Way. Look at that juicy zone. Briefly in that juicy zone. Now, guys, this apple's even higher than this right now, which is crazy. But look now. So look at everything together here. Now look at the profit from the beginning. Let's go all the way to where this went to. It even went higher, but let's just take this chart since that's what's in front of us. Now, this was the beginning. Look at that. Look at this compared to this. To this. Look at the little compared to the big. It's crazy. That's how you build wealth. Amazing. And that's just Apple, guys. We've had NVIDIA from $9. We had Home Depot from $28. We had Microsoft from $21. Facebook from $18. My God. It has been incredible. Look at Adobe. Look at when you're near. Look at when everything is near. Now, guys, you can imagine that this market fell like this. Went like this. This is what you see now. You see? And that's all markets do. Here's the bust. On the left, the, the, the coming together of all of your items. And then the boom. And look at, see the items are really close together here. Now your items are far apart. Now we take the money from here and we go to a market that is like this. I hope you understand that. We take the money out. 
and then put it into markets that are beginning again. While most people are going into these markets, thank God for them. I mean, who would we sell to if we didn't have uneducated, untrained people buying at wide states? They just don't understand. But you can't feel sorry for them because that's how we make our money. Sorry. Uh Uh-oh. Sorry. (laughs) I appreciate that, man. All right, now, what else? Guys, look at AMD. This is one of a, a, a favorite trading stock of my traders here. But look, look at look at the 200 now. You see the you see do you see the bust? Do you see the bust? Boom, there's the bust. Here is the bust. Look at the bust. Bust, bust, bust under the 200. Uh-oh. Back above the 200. Well, now we start the boom. Look at when the items were together. All right. Look at your items together. It start to rise from here. See? Together, rise. And now look at your items. <laughs> guys, this is not, let me say, look, guys, this is not rocket science. I used to, guys, I spent six years losing, depressed. I spent six years, the darkest period of my life, six years knowing what I wanted to do, knowing who I wanted to be but having no evidence that I should continue. Do you know how frustrating that is? To have everyone in your life abandon you because they think you're ruining your life, wasting your time, gambling. They used to call it, you're gambling. My parents used to say, you have destroyed our entire investment in your life. You have just thrown your education to the into the garbage to gamble. And I wanted nothing more than to prove them wrong. For six years, I couldn't. For six years, they were right. For six years, there was no evidence. There was no evidence that what I was doing was correct. For six years, I got no proof that I should keep going. Do you know how depressing that is? Six years of making the game harder than it had to be. Six years of approaching it in an untrained, uneducated manner. And it cost me relationships. It cost me a lot of money. It cost me six years of wasted time. I lost the early part of my years to this dark period. And guys, you know, during that period, I vowed to myself that if I were to ever make it, I'm going to do my part to leave behind some kind of legacy to help people that were like me, that just, I had a good heart and I wanted nothing more than to do this in life. I didn't want anything else in life, but there was nothing. There was no information. There was no Facebook back in the eighties. There were no study groups. There was no mentors. There were no seminars. There were no conventions to go to. There were no magazines. There were no books. Nobody wrote trading books in the 1980s. It was nothing, nothing but my desire 
and just darkness. <laughs> But when I arrived, when the light bulb finally went on, when I came out of from under my 200 period moving average to above my 200 period moving average, when I, when I went through the bust, it's the same thing, right? And then finally broke back through that 200, man, and start my 20 period moving average, started to rise and... <laughs> um, I look back on the darkness and I realize, oh my God, do you know what? It didn't have to be six years. My God, I, I realized in hindsight that I wasted so much time, that I, I unnecessarily experienced so much hardship because I, I was making the game more difficult. I somehow felt it was this extra complex thing. How could it not be complex? How could it not be very, very hard and difficult? And it's not. What I explained to you here today, you can take to any market right now, do it right now, pull up a monthly chart of anything, anything in life, and you'll be able to say, ah, beginning of the beginning of the boom, ah, end of the boom, wide apart, beginning, narrow, ah, under the 200 period moving average, it must have had a bust before. How did it get under? Rising 20, all right, the time to get in is near the 20 or below the 20. Ah, time to sell this market away from the rising 20. Like right now with these few basic tools, any market in the world, you actually can read it better than 90 plus percent of the people out there. And I know this because I was the 90%. <laughs> I've been there. I lived that. I lived that 90% experience, you know, but not anymore. And it's my gift to you today is just this insight so that never again will you be caught on the wrong side. You might be early. All right, we have to deal with that. You might be a little late. We have to deal with that, but not dead wrong. You will never be dead wrong again. Not with what I shared with you today. That is my gift to you. Whether you come on board with me or not, you walk away with the, your eyes wider open today. That was my promise to you. Look at Amazon, guys. Are you kidding me? Look at this. Come on. You now can look at this and know when to play the market. Look at when everything was closed. All the way back here in 2010. Now, guys, I have to admit, I've been in Amazon all the way back to the early 2000s, my initial entry price in Amazon is $7.50, all right? So, and I still own it, all right? But I will tell you this, that you can, this is when I started with Amazon in the wealth, with my wealth trading team, right? And you know what, you know what was done by what I taught you, all right? Profit-taking, getting some getting into some more, you know, some getting into some more. You know the deal. Look at that little quick uh, juicy zone. Look at these away... All of these are away. They don't look like it because the chart is skewed, but all of these are super far away. You know what to do. I mean, come on, guys. Is this freaking ridiculous? And it went up way more. <laughs> but you know how 
to play this now. And look. At the original. It's crazy. Now remember what I told you. I told you that the beauty, the beautiful thing, we can go on and on. It's no point in doing this. You, you already know this now. The beautiful thing, guys, is that look at the juicy zone in Etsy. There's always markets to take advantage of. They, they all don't go in the same cycle at the same time. So you have markets like this, like Etsy's in this market now. But you also have some things or markets that are this. So remember what I told you. You're coming out of these and putting it into these. That's what I help my traders do. We're just constantly rotating, just increasing the wealth, moving here, going there, coming out of there. And that's what wealth is all about, knowing where to move your chunk of wealth. What's next? What's the next market? What market is over? What market's over? What market's beginning? How long do we do this? Forever. Forever. I always say this, guys. My mom used to say, Oliver, never say things like, never. You never know, Oliver. I'm telling you, this cycle will ne- Mom, I'm sorry. This cycle will never end, never stop. It is the human psychological cycle imposed on markets. You see, there are times emotionally or psychologically when you are in your boom, there are times in your emotional and psychological cycle where you are at the top, there are times in your life, emotional and psychological cycle, you are in the bust. One of the ways I'm constantly explaining to my traders that markets are reflective of life in general. You know, markets don't have lives of their own. Their lives are reflecting the collective activity of human beings playing them. And some people say, well, Oliver, but what about the machines and the algorithms that play the market? Da, 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 da. But those machines and algorithms are also created by humans. So it's just an extension of the human psychology, and the human emotional cycle at work. And we as humans are that. That's what, that's what we are. Sometimes you're happy, sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're feeling good, sometimes you're feeling bad. Sometimes you, you're you good, and sometimes you're not so good. I mean, life is just a cycle. And this cycle that I've explained to you has been going on forever. And it will, mom, I'm sorry, it will never end. It just will keep repeating itself. And that's how consistent wealth can be built. built. The fact that it is is repeatable. And let me just tell you this, guys. A lot of people say, yeah, what do you think about Warren Buffett? Warren Buffett is playing exactly what I'm teaching you. What he calls value is what? Under the 200? After a bust? Value? What he is calling overvalue is wide apart. I mean, it's the same concept. You can't play successfully unless you're playing the concept that I explained to you. Whether you want to put different names on it, that's your choice. But it's the same. There's only one way. There's only one way to do it right. There's not two ways. There's one way. 
all right? You can't buy wide, you buy narrow, or you buy in the juicy zone, or you buy near the 20. These concepts are universal across all markets. Now, some people say, Oliver, can I use this on Forex? Can I use it on options? Can I use it on Bitcoin? Can I use it on stocks? Can you can use, listen, if they had a market to trade mother-in-laws, wouldn't that be interesting? <laughs> you could use it on the mother-in-law market. Anything that human beings trade back and forth, you can use it on because this cycle is going to show up through human behavior. Now, guys, I don't know what the situation is on Mars or life outside of planet Earth. I have yet to do intergalactic travel. I'm still waiting on Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos to, to jump on the bandwagon here. But until then, I only know how things operate here on Earth. And I will tell you, that as long as human beings are the ones active in these markets, the same cycle is going to follow them where they go. All right, now the human beings are trading stocks, same cycle. Oh, they moved to Bitcoin, same cycle. Oh, now they're trading options, same cycle. Wherever they go, whatever they touch, it's this up, now it's down. They're happy, now they're not happy. They're confident, now they're not confident. Repeat, repeat, repeat. The only difference is that when you thoroughly understand it, you then know how to manipulate it for wealth, for gains, for benefit. It's you stop being a victim of the cycle or a spectator wants to be a freaking spectator. I want to play. So instead of being a spectator, instead of being on the sidelines watching it, instead of being a victim, or better, or worse, instead of not even knowing there is a cycle, there's a cycle? I didn't know there's a cycle. <laughs> That's the worst. I don't know that there's a cycle. But instead of that, we can now take this knowledge and understanding and turn it into money. And more importantly, turn that money that we make from the cycle into lasting wealth. Wow. And I've dedicated my whole existence. I want you to understand this. I've never done anything different, except when I was a kid. I was a piano player. But aside from that, I only know one thing. A lot of people say, Oliver, man, you're so intelligent. No, I'm not. Just about one thing. They come ask me about this and that. Like, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a market player. I've only done one thing my whole life. I never had a plan B. I never stopped and then did something else and come back. Never. Every single day of my life from the age of 16 years old was dedicated to this never stopped i didn't never took a vacation i never quit i never took a break i never did anything else except this and so i would like you to take a journey with me if you have an interest in doing this, let's do this together. Let's take all of the guesswork out of this and let's just walk down that path together where we do the plays together. We do the entries together. We do the exits together. We do the study together. We do the analysis together. We do everything together. And for how long? Forever. Mom, there it is. I'm sorry again. Forever, mom. Sorry. Got to use it. No expiration. Week after week, month after month for life. And that's what I'd like you to do. I want more members of my team. I want more 
eyes, to train more eyes so that we go out into these markets and find, come back with these wealth building opportunities. If I teach you how to see the markets exactly the way I see the markets, then you and me become more valuable than just me and just you. It's crazy, right? So one and one don't equal two. One and one equal ten. It's crazy. It's a multiplier. And so, guys, I am telling you, I have a little over 500 wealth traders, all right? And I had the wealth, my wealth trading team closed for a little less than 10 years. Like I opened the wealth team and then closed it. I didn't want any more members, any more people on my team for almost 10 years. Why did I recently decide to open it? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Guys, look, when I started, all right, when I started the wealth game, we were here. Look at the items. 2010. When we were here, there was no reason. I didn't want anyone coming in. But now that we are here, guys, we're now on the opposite end of, I'm sorry, now that we are, I'm sorry, I didn't, let me, let me do this again. Let me do it again. So notice that when I started in 2010, everything's together. And I didn't have any interest at this point of starting a new anything because we were in the throes of everything. But now, look at where we are, traders. We're now on the opposite end of this. Understand? Now it's time to start again. You can make money from narrow to wide, but you can also make a fortune from wide to narrow. Now it's time for us to start again. And I am telling you, traders, that the traders who started with me in 2010 to now, oh my God. But now I want to take you and go from 2000. I want to go from now to this back. We play the boom and the bust. We also want to make sure we are going into markets like this. And I want us to do it together. So we're coming out of these going into these like this like I went into there we're going into there and I want us to do this together now when I first started in 2010 guys I charged people ten thousand dollars oh shoot I didn't have the chart up there sorry I got to do this all over again I'm sorry let me do it all over again I'm sorry guys I'll do it I don't care I'll do it again I have my face up there. Sorry about that. So check this out. So guys, look. In 2010, right? I started the well program here. Look at everything together. Everything's together. You see? That's when I started the well program. And so listen. After getting like around 500 or so members on my wealth team, that was enough. Everything was in motion at that time. 
right? There was no starting of anything new. We were just riding the wave, riding the boom, going into what we needed to go into, coming out, and just playing this incredible boom. You know, coming in during the juicy times and doing our thing. But this was the beginning, traders. This was the beginning. So why did I decide after nine years of having my wealth program closed, why did I decide to reopen it again? Because we're now back at a new beginning, traders. We're here. So you see... This was the beginning. This was a beginning. When everything was narrow and tight. But this is also a beginning, traders. This is also a beginning. A new beginning. When everything is wide. So look. The traders that were with me. From 2010 to now, oh my God, we went from narrow to wow. But with you, I want to go from wow back to narrow. You see, you don't just make money from the narrow to wide, you make money from wide back to narrow. We play the boom and the bust. You see? So this is a new beginning here. This was a beginning and this is a beginning. And so it's time for us to now focus on the bus side of some markets. But remember, while also, don't forget this, this is very important, while also finding these markets is very important. Finding those markets as well to come in there boom just like that market was here boom why was this the beginning look at the bus look way up here 200 there's that 200 there's that 200 above boom Now it's time to go from wow Remember I told you what paper markets do they go from little value to big value back to little value little value again to big value then back to little value little value To big value, you see it, back to little value, <laughs> little value to big value. Now, you know what time it is. It's time to go back from big value to little value. And I want to do this with you week by week, month by month, forever. You see... My wealth group, we operate for life. There's no expiration. This is not a course. This is, this is not a course that has a beginning and an end, guys. This is a lifelong activity, a lifetime club, a lifetime group, a lifetime team. We do it forever. Yes, there, it has a cost. Everything worthwhile in life does, right? 
And so when I first started all the way back, guys, in 2010 with this, I opened up the wealth trading team. $10,000. Now, 500 members. And then closed it. I had people knocking on the doors for years and years after that. Nope. Kept it closed. Now it's opening again. $10,000. The traders made millions. Microsoft, 21. Facebook at 18. These things are $400, $300. Home Depot, 28. You got things like, like Twitter. At, Twitter was at $18 as well. And our goal is to double our money on every single play. Does every single play work? No. How can that be? That's ridiculous. But a lot of them do. And remember I showed you, the ones that don't work, that circle is little. But when they do, that circle is wow. Right? And so these traders would recognize, I can lose $10,000 in one play. I can lose $10,000 in a year. This is for life. And look at Oliver's record. Look at what he's done. All right, so I want you, if this is something of interest to you, the other reason that I've decided to open this back up again is the new law changes. Let me explain that to you very quickly. This is very important. You see, back when I started in 2010, there weren't fractional, there were no fractional buys really available like they are today. So if you want to get into Tesla, which is in the $400 range, three to $400 range, right? You want to get into Tesla as an example. My ear just went out on me. Um, just to buy 100 shares was a big investment. Now you can buy one share. You can buy a half a share. You can buy 0.25% cent of a share, like the fractional share capability that we as investors have today means that nothing is off limits. Nothing is too expensive anymore. Who cares if the, if Amazon is $3,000, it doesn't matter. Buy 0.15% of one share. It's the same thing. And so the opportunities now have just exploded due to these new changes. It's the new world. And I'm excited about that. So not only are we at the beginning of a brand new part of the cycle, which, wow, is, um, if the last cycle was any indication, this is going to even be bigger. So not only are we at the beginning of a brand new cycle, we're at the beginning of a brand new era as far as investing is concerned because now, no matter how small your account, no matter how little your money, you can play this game. You used to be knocked out of the game unless you had a good chunk of money to utilize, right? Not today. You can start off with the smallest amount today and play this game exactly the way I play it. Different scale, but so what? If you got $10, doubling it to $20 is a 100% gain. All right, fine. You got $5,000, let's start doubling that. You got $2,000, let's start doubling that. Now, I, 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 I required on my wealth program $10,000, but here, look. Oh, I'm sorry, it used to be $14,000. Sorry, got the price wrong. There we go. That's what it used to be, all right? But I'm, of course, that was in 2010. So here it is now, guys. Look, it's not $14,000 to be belong to this program and for us to walk this path together 
trade by trade, week by week, month by month for life. Where I teach you, educate you, we meet up together, we study together, we select the plays together, we enter together, we exit together. I tell you my whys, I tell you my wins, I show you my plays, I tell you what I'm gonna do before and after and why. We have study sessions together forever. We become partners forever in this. $4,000. That's 10000 less than it used to be. That's where I got the $10,000 number from. $4,000. It's one trade, guys. For life. But that's not it either. We're going to knock the $4,000 out. And I'm reopening the program for $2,000. $2,000 for a lifetime. $2,000 for me to transfer 38 years of experience to you every single week of your life. $2,000 to know every single move I make for every single account I have, every foundation, every one of my children's trust funds, every retirement firm account, every move, no matter what account it is, you have an inside secret look. I will teach you how to do this month after month after month forever. You will, I promise you will never be thrown. You will never get it dead wrong. We won't be right 100% of the time. Nobody can. But at the last cycle of the last 10 years, and if my full 30 years of doing this since the late 1980s is any, indica any indication, the cycles just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. $2,000 for life. Now break this $2,000 down, guys, over a lifetime. Don't look at it like it's all up front. Think about this. Think about $2,000 over a year. Break it down 365 times. What's the daily cost? Wait a minute. But why are we doing it over one year? Take $2,000 and break it up into a daily cost over five years. Wait a minute. What about 10 years? But I usually don't tell people to go beyond five. Take this cost, my mother taught me, and say, what's the daily value over five years? I got to give at least five years to this. It's crazy low. It's a freaking cup of coffee. But I promise you, if you feel that you've gotten some value out of two and a half, three hours with me, imagine over a lifetime. Imagine being with me month after month for the rest of your life. That's crazy. I will grow and you will grow together. We will grow together. Now, what if I knock that $2,000 down even more? Put a little time limit on it. 48 hours, $1,800. Right, two hundred dollars is two hundred dollars, traders. Right, two hundred dollars for life. Now I promise you, the same thing is going to happen. I am going to get a rush of people in, and then I'm going to close this program again until the next cycle opens again. It's hard to bring people in in the middle of a cycle with their questions and everything, and everyone's already past them. And I don't want it that way. So I'm telling you, if you have an interest in building wealth, if you have an interest in taking advantage of this next cycle that's coming up, this is the time to do it, and it is upon us. I didn't have time to go into why I believe specifically beyond us being in a wide place 
that we're going to start going to narrow again and fast because of political uncertainties and and because of the 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 acceleration of the dollar's decline. I didn't get a chance to go into all of that, but it's here, guys. It's here and will ignite within the next several months. You want to be here. All right? And guys, let me just say this. I started out this I started out this talk telling you that each time I'm given the ability to speak to you and I'm saying you in the general sense because I've been speaking on the topic of trading the markets professionally for 26 years. And I've probably spoken to more traders throughout the world than anyone alive at this particular point. And each time I'm given the privilege of addressing you, talking to you, I really do my best, whether you come on board and become a family member, I do my very best to try to leave something of value to you, something that you can use so that it wasn't just time spent with me just trying to pull you into my family. I believe that being a family member is extraordinarily valuable, will be extraordinarily valuable to you, but just in case it's not for you, I want always you to have something that you can go out and use without me. And I hope I've done that here today. I want you to know that your support, your presence here is so very honored by me. I know that you could be out with your family members at this time. You could be walking your dog around the park. You could be shopping at the mall. You could be playing with your kids in the park, but you're here with me. That is not something that I take for granted ever. So I am hoping that today I have in some way delivered on my promise to leave something of value that you can use forever. I'm hoping that in some way I've raised your level of market sophistication. I've, in, I've opened your eyes. I've caused you to be able to see markets from a different angle. I hope I've done that. All right, traders. All right. I want you to know, I love you. Thank you so much for your support, guys. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Woo. Love you. Boom. Boom.
control the world.